Polish ping pong. Well, I wouldn't define a sport. Basically, it's a game that was created in Poland. That's a better version of ping pong. Yeah. Break yeah. down the game. All right. Well, uh, I guess you can have. There's no specific number of players you can have. Um, anyone wants to play can play. It's essentially. I guess there's only the, the, the primary rule is that it has to bounce once on the floor, preceded by the table. So no matter where you hit it, you can play any objects around. You can play off the wall. You just got to hit the floor once, and bam, you play. And you have to follow an order. Yeah. So there's a set order that is determined before you start. Everyone has a number, and you follow that order. And then once the last person goes, the first person is after that. Uh, my name is Mr. Hop, and I taught physics at Council Rock High School before it was North and South. And we played this game many, many years ago, and we called it, called it basically Polish table tennis. Polish ping pong is like the best time of my day. After like a long day of school, I fail every single test I take, and I'm really sad. It's freedom, and uh, throwing down the established sort of the regular ping pong. And you made new friends playing this game. Yeah, it's a good way to be social after school and get active. Just something I look forward to after school. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it helps me get me through like like a lot of the crap that I had to go through, like math and physics. Like all of it is so serious. But when I come after school, I'm like hanging out with like a bunch of people. It's really cool, like to look forward to that. It's a lifestyle. I'd say my favorite part of the game is being able to give it all you have. If the ball happens to go too far to your right and you want to you want to die for it, you want to lay out, you can give it 100%. You can lay out, you can scrape your knee, scrape your elbow. Everyone, everyone will get real excited. You'll be able to hit it and, you know, if you can. It'll be awesome. And how does it feel seeing all of these kids here playing this game that I imagine you introduced, did you? I believe I did to Castle yeah. Rock. Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful game. It's very challenging, and, I, and all the students seem to like it. So we played it. Yeah, the problem was getting out. room. Yeah. You know, when you're playing regular table yeah. tennis, there's not enough room to go around the table. What is what is Wailo? Wailo, it's uh, it's kind of a new thing that just started this year. It's uh, when the ball hits the side of the table, a duel starts. The only equitable way of resolving some conflict is to play one point of regular ping pong. But it's more than that. It fuels the rivalry and the passion amongst all the players, all the Polish ping pong players. I guess there was some misconception. People thought duelo was Spanish for duel. But I, I found out today that it's pain. It doesn't mean pain. What's your favorite play? Favorite play is long ball. It's probably the long ball. Definitely. When uh, you start to have a rally and it gets really far away from the table, so you just keep hitting it harder and harder and it gets far away. That's the best part. When the Andy game became a common term, it started out the ball can only hit the ground once, you know, it has to hit the table, you can only hit the ball once. But then when Andy Tarasu joined the game, it took a turn. The rules changed a little bit. We started blowing the balls off the table, we started, you know, blocking each other, boxing each other out, and it became a physical game also. It's doing everything off the ball for the other opponent to miss hitting the ball. Your favorite moment that's happened in a game of Polish ping pong? I have to say, when I was running across the table to get the ball, I kind of had a casual backhand to get it back on the table, and I wasn't looking at it. Alex Kirshner running for a ball behind him. He doesn't look at the ball. Alex Kirshner's behind the back, one hand casual shot that went right back on the table. He doesn't he just react very casually, he just hits it behind his back, puts it on the table like like it was nobody's business. You and your brother, you guys, uh, you have a rivalry. Of yes, we do. We have a sibling rivalry. Which yeah. one? Which one is the better? <laughs> oh, me easily. Yeah, who's better? You or your brother? Definitely me. He talks to he talks to, but we all know that I'm the better player. I, I know one of the problems. One of our biggest problems is we don't often have gym time. No, like the volleyball season is approaching, and during that, it's going to be real tricky to find gym time. Absolutely. So but usually when the, they're they're away. Like away games, that's when you can get the gym. Yeah. That's when you have to do that. Because I ran intramurals at North and South ever since I started teaching, and we've always had the same problem. Right. In the old days, this gym was intramurals from 2.15 to 3 o'clock. Right. You could not have any varsity practice wow. at all until 3 o'clock. Bullish Ping Pong is a great example of how a few friends one day just decided to stay after school and play. It started with like a handful of people, and it grew to like 
one point we had like 30 people show up one day. If there were more intramurals and after school sports, would you participate? Yeah, absolutely. I think Polish ping pong is just the tip of the iceberg.